I just want to speak a bit about your work today because you're known most of all, as far as I'm aware, for your work on Huda TV and especially the Ask Huda. And I just wanted to ask, how did this begin? Because it's been very beneficial, especially living in the West. Many people, they don't have access to scholars or sheikhs. And even the internet is quite a new phenomenon, really. So people, you know, a lot of people call into your show and you give them answers. So how did this all begin? Well, it all started when I traveled to the States to um, get my PhD in uh, something called pharmacognosy, which deals with the pharmacology and the medicinal plants. It's a combination of both. Mm. Uh, then I used to lead the prayer in uh, Ramadan and so on. And uh, they asked me uh, to give the khutbah. Uh, you know, I used to give the khutbah since I was in high school, but in Arabic. And I said, you give the khutbah, oh, oh, I was, I was really scared. <laughs> I said, yeah, I'll give the khutbah in Arabic. They said, no, you give the khutbah in English. No one would understand you if you give it in Arabic, at least what I was. I said, look, I can speak for an hour about pharmacology, but not in, uh, in khutbah to al-jumu'ah. Uh, so that was like an eye-opener to me. I said... Yes, I was giving da'wah on a small scale to my colleagues. I used to have some Jewish colleagues, Christian colleagues. Alhamdulillah, shukrullah, it was working very well. But to the extent of giving khutbah, standing before the audience and uh, without a taper, without a reference, and giving a speech and a public speech in English, it, was, uh, it wasn't something that I expected that would happen one day. Mm. But subhanAllah, whenever Allah wants anything, He facilitates it. So um, I started preparing for it and uh, started studying uh, the uh, religious terminology in English. Mm. And meanwhile, I enrolled in Al-Azhar again to uh, get a degree in the Sharia, the Islamic law. The Al-Azhar has many schools. Mm. The finest school or college in Al-Azhar as far as Islamic studies is Kulliyatul Sharia. So I was blessed to enroll in Kulliyat al-Sharia again. My wife has graduated already and she was doing uh, her degree in the different dialects. So I decided to join her and study the different dialects of the Quran. Since in order for her to learn, I used to sit with her. So I thought, well, as well, let me uh, get the same uh, education and degree. But having good companions and good friends... Uh, really changed my decision completely. So we were sitting once and they asked me, if you're living in the States, I was visiting Egypt, they said, if you're living in the States, we don't think that Americans will benefit much if you recite the 10 different dialects of the Quran. Mm. They may enjoy it, but it will not benefit them. Mm. I said, what do you mean? They said, you know, it's best if you study fiqh. Mm. People want to learn what is halal and what is haram because there are a lot of wrong fatwas here and there. Mm. So in the same setting, I changed the direction completely from studying the different dialects of the Quran into studying Islamic law and comparative fiqh. Mm. Alhamdulillah, it did work out very well. So I continued with the kulliya and I graduated uh, from Al-Azhar. I also finished my master's and PhD in the same field. Alhamdulillah. And I almost forgot about my medical background. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, I became full-time in da'wah more than, uh, more than 20 years ago. Alhamdulillah wa shukrullah. So I, I know Huda, Huda TV has been running for like 15 years now, right? Yeah. About 15 yeah, yeah. years? Yeah. So Mashallah. was you there from the beginning or did you join later? From day one, alhamdulillah. From day one. From the, uh, we started Ramadan 2005. I was in the States. And they phoned me and they said, you know, in Ramadan, we want to do a live show. I thought it's a crazy idea. And mm. in Ramadan, I got to lead the prayer and be in the community. Yeah. You know, for so many years, I, I didn't go for Umrah during Ramadan because of my commitment of leading the prayer. Mm. But when you also make mashura, you consult the people. I was even consulting my students mm. and my colleagues. They said that's something much more beneficiary. Mm. So uh, I let my brother lead the prayer. Then I uh, presented the live show of Ask Huda for the first time in my life, Ramadan 2005. Was you doing Q&A at that time? Was it was people phoning in or was it more uh, just... I just don't go there. I, <laughs> 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 I cannot it? tell you what happened to me. People do not know that. 
I sat and you know the director and the producer everybody was trying to assure me like you're sitting in the masjid yeah. and answering questions and once I was live you know I was having cramps and I felt like I'm gonna die <laughs> and when the first phone started ringing I was so scared that I wish I wasn't there <laughs> Then the question started one after another, non-stop. Yeah. And subhanAllah, I guess because of the frequency of the questions and the phone calls, I got distracted from the fear factor. Mm. So I just, uh, I liked it. Alhamdulillah, shukrullah. And that led me to study more, to learn more, different madahib, because if you're sitting on that seat and answering people from different backgrounds, it is not fair to mm. stick to one madhab and tell them this is how it is. Yeah, that's not fair. Yeah, that's you're, you're catering yeah. for people from, you know, who are Hanafis, mm. Shafi'is, Malikis, mm. and following Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. You really have to study mm. this the, the one single masala mm. from all different angles. I found that with with your with your dawah that you you know you do take into consideration where the people are from, you know what culture they're from, you know because this is very important. It's, it's so important. It's very important. It's because not fair to have a certain one mindset mm. and try to impose it on people. And certain communities that, like of course, you've lived in 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 the states. You've you've travelled all over the world. I live in England, and of course, the the West is a mixture of different cultures and and different understanding standings of Islam. But of course, if someone's phoning you from different parts of the world. They're just in one community, you know, and you have to take into consideration. And Alhamdulillah, I've noticed that about your dawah. Actually, living in, yeah. in North America or in Europe mm. gives you the opportunity to have a small world mm. in front of you or in your hands. Mm. So in our community, we have like 15 to 17 different nationalities. <laughs> <laughs> they're from other tongues, different mm. nationalities. Everybody was speaking English. Mm. Uh, most of them did not know Arabic and uh, did not lear, uh, know how to read the Quran. Mm. But we started from the scratch. Mm. And mashallah, everybody has become professional mm. in reading Quran. How long did you live in the States for? Uh, between 17 to 20 years. Basically, you don't look old enough. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Uh, but basically, you know, the last few years yeah. I was going back and forth. Mm. So I wanted to keep running Huda TV and mm. presenting the live show. It was only twice a week mm. in the beginning. Uh, so this is all I have to do in addition mm. to teaching at the university, Al Azhar University, mm. and also online in London College. Mm. Then later on, we started uh, uh, the Islamic University of North America. I was there since the beginning. Mm. So I was busy with uh, online teaching. Uh, with Al Azhar, then uh, the TV, other TV stations like uh, Iqra International in English and French, um, they uh, they signed a contract with me, so I was uh, actually presenting. Uh, it wasn't like signing a contract; literally, it was an agreement. Yeah. So for, um, I was presenting uh, again the live Fatawa program, um, and I've done a few other programs for them, mm. Peace TV. Uh, uh, I've done a few programs for them. Of course, yeah. Uh, Islam TV. channel. Every time I go to yeah. the UK, every time I go to the UK, uh, they host me for the live Q and A yeah. uh, questions. Um, Even so Sheikh, you, you know, you, Subhanallah, you've been invited all over the world. You spent a lot of time in the Far East, the Middle East. You know, all over the world, Subhanallah. You've seen so you much. Know, you know, when we started Huda TV. And I wanted to keep up with my work in in the states and the conferences and the students. You're not going to believe that. You know, it takes you 12 hours direct fly from Cairo to JFK in New York City. 12, 12 and a half hours. Then you got to look for another ride, the transit, mm. for a couple hours, a few hours. If you're lucky, if it is not snowing, if it is snowing, you can just spend the night at the airport. <coughs> Excuse me. Then you fly to either Texas, Florida, California, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia. Mm. So I've been flying around, mashallah. Mm. So sometimes in within ten days, I used to travel twice. Subhanallah. Twice, but that also affected my health a lot. So mm. uh, uh, I developed DVTs, mm. and that's why I wasn't able to travel that mm. often. So I slowed Shaka, down and started I, taking care I, of my health. I mean, I've seen you in quite a few countries now. We recently we was on Hajj together, subhanAllah. Yeah. I met you on the Hajj. But where was the first time we met? Can you remember? 
Uh, that was in Africa. Is it I Nigeria? Think the first time in in Africa. I think it was yes. Nigeria, and then we had the journey of faith. We were supposed Kenya. to meet in the UK, but it didn't uh, happen. Mm. Then we met in. Um, oh, I'll tell you where it was. You remember I, I did the um, the Hajj program a few years ago for Huda TV. Yeah. But we yeah, did. But we, we still didn't, didn't meet, meet during no. this time. We were there, but we never met. Yeah, I think it was either in Kenya or Nigeria. Yeah. We yeah, love Sahara. Africa. Yeah, Africa is nice. Inshallah. has great potentials. Yeah. The brothers and sisters in Africa are the easiest to give da'wah, mashallah. Yeah. How, how was your experience in, in, in uh, cause you've been to Uganda, Kenya? Well, again, it started as uh, I was still in, in uh, living in the States or my house in the States mm -hmm. going back and forth and my community, my school, everything. Then once in Ramadan, I saw there was a program on Al Majd channel. Mm. Um, it was right before my uh, live show or after. And the uh, Majd in Arabic, they were hosting Dr. Abdurrahman Al Sumit. Oh, I was watching the program mm. by myself. And I still remember what happened as I was watching this program in Ramadan before Iftar. And the host was taking. Uh, the cameraman and we're going behind Dr. Abdurrahman al sumit showing his achievements mm. in Africa and John I broke into tears yeah. Wallahi I kept on crying and crying and crying non-stop yeah. and I said this is the true da'wah you know how it is in, in the states yeah. you know five star hotels mm. and you know flying here and there and after we finish, what are you gonna die in T-bone steak? I, I I don't know about this. You, oh, you, obviously you know do. everything. I don't know the <laughs> pasta and the T-bone steaks. <laughs> so I said, Man, this is this is a true yeah. dawa. Yeah. This is a true dawa. Sheikh, I've been far in the jungle, right? And you'll find a small masjid, and yes. it's got the plaque of, so of his, his charity. I immediately decided yeah. to change my direction, or at least to give some attention to mm. dawa in Africa. Even though I didn't go to the same places like Dr. Abdurrahman al sumit And by the way, yeah. I was so blessed to visit him before he died. Mashallah. I always wanted to see yeah. this man who sacrificed his life. Or let me yeah. rephrase it that Allah chose him for yeah, this kind so of task. He's I, a I, I one man his, show, uh, he's a nation yeah. by himself. Himself and his wife. Yeah. May Allah bless them both. When I was living in Kuwait, I met Abdullah, his son. Uh, I know Abdullah. It he was his son who uh, actually uh, made Ab it easy for me yeah. to see him in the uh, in the hospital. You know, he was in the ICU and yeah. he was in, you know, in the in his last few days. So I managed to see him before he died. May Allah have mercy on Amen. his soul. And I want to tell mm. you that, you know, literally, the person, the very person who inspired me to start traveling to Africa and considering giving da'wah in Africa, if we have achieved any success in Africa for the past, uh, for the past 14, 13 years, mm. it is because of him. May Allah mm. have mercy on his soul. I, mean, I, I think my first uh, trip was to Uganda. It was, uh, yeah. it was a debate. Oh, yeah? We had like seven Christian priests from various uh, places. And mashallah, one of them accepted Islam. We have mashallah. a lot of people mashallah. accepted Islam on that day. It mm. was in the stadium. Yeah, the Ugandan people are very open to Islam, and they, they accept Islam with knowledge. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't say Ugandans or Nigerians they, they, only. There's some there's some mm. tribes which you know they they they're more difficult. They, you know, not not all of them are, are so keen to accept. But Ugandans especially, they're very open to Islam and, and they, they're very because Muslims and Christians are living and you know side by Dr. Abdul Rahman Sumit he was a physician mm. and he uh, studied also and graduated his post graduate degree was from Canada I believe mm. um, so we decided to follow his footsteps uh, myself and uh, a few of my colleagues who are doctors nephrologists and uh, internists or whatever we, we decided to go to Africa and do uh, you know in, in two parallel tracks, yeah. uh, humanitarian help and uh, da'wah. MashaAllah. I, I want to tell you this. Mm. I, I happen to stay in, the in some of the finest hotels in the, in the world mm. and around the world and fly in the finest airlines. And also I happen and to... And swim in the finest swimming <laughs> pools. <laughs> and, I happen, and I happen to mm. stay 
in, as you said, the jungle, literally. Mm. And in some countries where the lifespan, the average lifespan is only 50 years. Yes, yes. Why? Because people don't have medication. You get renal failure, mm. you get sick, you just die. Yeah. So we, we used to take the medication with us. And we would uh, open free clinics and mm. offer free treatment Mashallah. for everyone. Wallahi. SubhanAllah. So the queue, uh, no, they didn't have light. They yeah. didn't have clean drinking water. So we used to use the, 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 the light, the flashlight on our phones until the battery would die. And the queue would be like miles. People are in lines and queues yeah. waiting for, you know, some analgesics or to know their blood pressure mm. or whether they are diabetic or not. So one girl, she was a teenager. She came across and she said, oh, so doctor, do I have to become a Muslim in order to be treated? She spoke very well English. And that made me shiver. Yeah. I said, no, ma'am, you don't have to. You're absolutely Sipana. free Sipana. to take the medication and walk. Inshallah. We're not even giving dawah then. Yeah. So we separated, yeah. you know, the humanitarian work. Yeah. And that was mm. out of our pocket. Yeah. I mean, we didn't have like a sponsorship. We didn't have a hotel to stay in. <laughs> so the, myself and the doctors, we really slept on the floor. We were bitten by the mosquitoes badly. Where was this actually? Uh, what country was this? Uh, I don't know if I should say, but it's in uh, uh, Burundi. Okay, mashallah. It was such a long journey from here to there. And uh, subhanAllah, one day we were really starving. So we managed to get some fish. Okay. And uh, we didn't know what to do with it because we don't have a stove. <laughs> <laughs> so we collected some fire logs and we just put the bre the, the fish on the fire. <laughs> SubhanAllah. <laughs> it smells and everything, yeah. but it was very you know, delicious. You know, these type of experiences, you value the most. You know, they, they're so much more valuable than staying in like a big five-star yeah, hotel. That's why you remember them. And you remember the smells, you remember the smell of the fish, the cooking, everything, the fire. You well, know, it's, Later it's, on when I uh, went to Connecticut, I was invited and Ramadan, mm. uh, they uh, asked me to uh, visit them for a few days. This is what I can afford. And they booked me a five-star hotel. Mm. So because I came late when they checked me in and I saw the price, yeah. I phoned them immediately and said, you know what? Let's take a hike. I'm not staying in this hotel. They said, yeah. where are you going to stay? I said, I'm going to stay in the masjid. No, mm. no, no, you're going to stay in the masjid. I said, yes. Yeah. And I... Uh, bought a sleeping bag and I yeah. just slept in the masjid and it was a beautiful experience mashallah Sheikh you know people might be thinking what are you doing here you know this isn't your back garden we're renting know. this we're place literally, yeah you know just to clarify to the people <laughs> at home you know we've been renting this place and we've just done a full series about the fiqh of love for Huda TV yeah. 